So this week we're going to do a talk on fibromyalgia. <clears throat> There's a lot of misperceptions about fibromyalgia. Um, a lot of people just think it comes on randomly and there's, it just doesn't make any sense. And it's hard and that's, and even in the medical fields there's a lot of misconceptions, there's misdiagnoses of it. There is, oh you have fibromyalgia, I'm gonna give you this. And the big things to look at for fibromyalgia and to understand that fibromyalgia is actually an autoimmune issue. And most people aren't aware of that. That it, it actually is the body attacking itself. Now, we'll go through the different things about how it can happen, what will cause it, what leads to different issues, but the big takeaway is, is fibromyalgia is a body with an exhausted nerve system. That's really what it is. That's the big, big, big takeaway. So, if we look at the word itself, fibromyalgia, fibro, fibrous tissue, my, muscle, fibrous and muscle tissue, and algae is pain. It's all it's saying is, we got muscle pain. So, if you worked out and the next day you're sore, or the day after, and you have domes, delayed onset muscle soreness, if you have that long enough, that's fibromyalgia. Now, chiropractors have been, so have you guys ever worked out and you feel sore, you know, that soreness? That's literally what, what fibromyalgia is. But if you leave it long enough, it'll turn into a chronic inflammatory issue. So it's about, are you taking care of it early enough and doing the preventative thing, or are you gonna let it progress into a thing where the body actually starts eating away at itself? So when you look at it, I'll show you the medical route, and they don't even do this anymore. What they have is they have different diagnostic points. And if you have, I believe it's 11 of the 18 points are tender, then you're considered to be a fibro, have a person with fibromyalgia. So the points are right here on the front, here and here, on the back of the head, here and here, then on the elbows, on the ins outsides, the SI joints, the femurs, and the knees. Now, here's the problem with all these points. Is there insertion points where you're going to have major muscles moving, and it's just telling you, you have soreness at the points where your major muscles are moving. The diagnostic criteria though is, is it taut and tender or does it hurt in these points? And if you have so many, then you're diagnosed with it. Now it's gone from there and now they're trying to diagnose it differently and they're trying to make it obscure so it's not even that anymore. So it's just, oh, you have fibromyalgia and it's that you're just diagnosed because you're sore. And that's why a lot of people are diagnosed with fibromyalgia, which are misdiagnosed. Truthfully, from what I see, one out of every 100 people that are diagnosed with fibromyalgia actually have fibromyalgia. Most people are misdiagnosed. The easiest way to see if you have fibromyalgia is, is make sure you drink a lot of water, so much water that your urine is completely clear. So that means you're not dehydrated, because if your urine has ye color, yellow or any other color in it, it means you're dehydrated. If you drink a lot of water, and then you do that for a week, and you're still sore, then you may have fibromyalgia. Most people are dehydrated. 90% of the people I see that have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia are dehydrated. They do not have fibromyalgia. And the reason why the points hurt is if you're dehydrated and you don't have enough fluid, and it's a point where it moves a lot, you're gonna build up inflammation. And the fluid won't move the inflammation, and you feel bad. That makes sense? So, these, that's when the body isn't working right. Most people misdiagnose. They don't have fibromyalgia. Because if, if I can literally touch you and you don't react when one of those points, like say on the chest here, and you don't react and scream in, in agony and pain, you don't have it. Because it's an extreme inflammatory issue. True fibromyalgia is when your body is attacking the joints. And they're, they're, it's not even the joint, it's the muscle itself. So it literally starts to attack it. So you go, well, why would the body do something like that? And the answer is stress response. Responding to stress. Something bad came at me, I gotta respond. I gotta do something to protect myself. Now, what happens is, we'll go into the brain thing. We'll go into the brain waves. We've got beta. Alpha. 
alpha, theta, gamma. These are frequencies in the brain. Beta is high, high frequencies. It's 12 to 31, depending on the research, 40 hertz. Alpha, you're going to be looking at 7.8 to roughly 12 hertz. Theta, you're going to be looking at 3.5 to 7.8. And then delta is 1 to 3 hertz. So what does this mean? This is the frequency that the brain actually communicates at. And that frequency will actually tell you how your body's adapting. So you're like, okay, what do you mean by that? We're actually talking about how fast or how quickly the firing is. So a herd is a repetition. So if we're up here in beta and high energy, that's good if you're stressed out. It's good, it's not good if that's where you live. So if you're stressed out as in a bear just jumped out at you, you're supposed to be at that high frequency for a short period of time. But then you go down and relax. The problem with most people in America is they live here. They live in hyper-stress lane. And because they live there, their body can't heal because healing happens in alpha and theta and delta. Not so much, I say gamma, it's supposed to be delta. This is where major healing happens. This is when you're dead asleep. So what happens with most people is they get hyper, hyper, hyper stressed from emotional, physical, just living in the world we live in. People have no faux phobia, which means they have phobia of losing their phone because it vibrates so often that they literally are addicted to it. I, I looked up the word, it's real. That's insane. I had, a, I had a child come in and I asked him to empty his pockets and I took an x-ray and there's a phone in his pocket and he said, oh no, that's part of me. That's how bad people are getting nowadays. They're addicted to their phones. So <clears throat> that phone is giving you constant stimulus. That stimulus is the beta. When you drive down the street and there's stuff everywhere and that constant information coming in, it gets you into defense, defense mode. And when you live here long enough, what will happen is you will actually start to exhaust your nerve system. So your body will have different reactions. If you're stuck in over arousal, you might want to follow me here. We can look at this board. So when we look at the nerve system, we can see the balanced system is up here. But if you're stuck in over arousal or unstable, you'll get common symptoms. And the common symptoms are cold hands, cold feet, tight muscles, grinding teeth, anxiety, heart palpitations, so the, the heart's going all over, restless sleep, uh, emotional instability, uh, poor immune system, racing mind, high blood pressure, accelerated aging, and irritable bowel. What that means all in very simplistic terms is you're burning your nerve system like you're, like you're on rocket fuel. You're just going real quickly. This one's interesting. If you know anybody who grinds their teeth, it's actually a way for your body to relax. So what you do is if you're so in such a state of anxiety, and they did this during the war, they gave it to, they gave um, Marines and different people, they gave them gum, because when you chew, it turns on your parasympathetic or your relaxation and calms you down. Well, when you're sleeping, your body doesn't have a way to do it besides grinding your teeth, because when you grind your teeth, it causes you to calm down and will allow you to sleep. If you're a real big teeth grinder, it means you have an over-aroused nerve system. Mm -hmm. Then if we see other people and we see this common cold hands and cold feet, these are people that are over-aroused and they're so over-aroused that their body is in a defense mode that it literally pulls the energy away from the hands and moves it to the big muscles so that it can fight off things. And because you think you're going to be attacked, that's why you have the racing heart, the mind, all these different things because you're in what's called a hyper sympathetic tone. You're in a stress response for a long period of time. Now if you look here, if you stay in this stress response for long enough, what does it say right here? It says fibromyalgia. Because what happens with fibromyalgia I'll go back now, is that your body actually starts to attack the neuromuscular junction. 
That's really what it is. And so what happens is you get stuck here so long that you can't get into these states correctly, the alpha and theta states, and then your body starts to attack stuff. And you go, well, why would that happen? And what happens is you actually have two different systems in your body. You have your nerve system that runs everything. Well, this is simplistically just for autoimmune issues. Your nerve system that runs everything. And then you have your immune system, which is like the little fighter troops that decide what they're going to attack. Well, here's the deal. The immune system does whatever the nerve system tells it to do as long as it talks to it. If it doesn't talk to it, it's like a 12-year-old. You just fed a bunch of sugar to. It's going to go do whatever it wants. And whatever it decides it wants to do is what the dysfunction comes out to be. So say it decides to attack the part of your body. Let's see, let's just go down the, 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 the list. If you have an exhausted nerve system and the immune system won't work right, you can get rheumatoid arthritis. So what does that mean? It decided that it's gonna attack your hyaline cartilage in your joints, and that's foreign. So it says, you're bad, and it starts attacking it. So rheumatoid arthritis is your immune system not listening to the nerve system anymore because the nerve system has literally been shouting at it for decades. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Because you've been in such a stress state that you're grinding your teeth just so you can fall asleep, that you're cold, you have all these issues because you're trying to defend yourself, you're scared. So the, the nerve system is literally saying, defend, 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 and it's shooting at really high frequencies and eventually it can't do that anymore. It wears out the energy, and the system can't communicate anymore. And then the immune system says, well, you're not really telling me anything. I'm just gonna decide what I want to attack. And then it attacks your hyaline cartilage. That's called rheumatoid arthritis. What's the, what's the next one? MS. It starts attacking your brain. It says, you know what? We don't like this. We don't like this specific part of the brain. Let's attack it. It's called multiple sclerosis. You'll get plaquing. Get the same thing with ALS. It'll actually attack the motor nerves in the nerve system. So the immune system will say, you know what? You're not talking to me. This thing's been a problem to me. I'll attack the part of the nerve that controls the muscle. That's called ALS. Or maybe we'll get something like fibromyalgia. So what's fibromyalgia? We have the nerve communicating. Then we have the muscle, and it's not working right. And what literally happens is the immune system will start attacking the whole muscle itself. And it will literally cause inflammation in the muscle points. But the interesting part is when you look at where it attacks it, it's always at the points where we're gonna have a lot of motion. So this part of your arm, this part of your hip, right up here where you bend and move your neck around, it's where you have a lot of motion. So it's literally the body attacking itself because we have a heightened emotion or movement area. So you say, okay, so you're telling me fibromyalgia is my body attacking myself. And I go, yeah, exactly right. So what can we do to actually heal it? Good question. What can we actually do to heal it? Well, the cool thing about the body is, is that every nine months, it remakes itself. So you're not stuck where you are. And this is the difference between going to somebody who's a holistic provider and somebody who sees you as a whole body compared to somebody who sees you as a joint or an organ or one specific system, like just your heart or just your liver. Is that when I look at you, I go, what is the whole system and why isn't it working? So if we look at the nerves, why aren't they communicating correctly? We are stuck in hyper stress. Well, why don't we do some things to train you how to de-stress? besides grinding our teeth. Why don't we do some things like learning how to do proper breathing? And this sounds real simple, but this is why yoga and different meditation things work so well to help people get off their drugs and diseases. Because if you can breathe properly, you're actually training your nerve system to turn on and turn off, turn on and turn off. That's what proper rhythmic belly breathing is. Is that when you breathe in, What's supposed to happen is your heart rate's supposed to go up and you activate the sympathetic or the response a little bit. And when you breathe out, it turns on your parasympathetic and your heart rate's supposed to go down. The bigger the variation in these two of heart rate going up and heart rate going down, it's called heart rate variability. 
It has a 95% correlation to morbidity. So what that means simplistically, if you have a low heart rate variability where it very, very deviates a little bit, that means you're going to have a heart attack. And you're going to die because your body can't adapt properly. If you have a big variation, it means you can adapt correctly and you're going to live a long time. And this is something you can train yourself to do. And if you want to see if you're doing it correctly, what you can do is put a book on your tummy and breathe. And if the book doesn't go up and down, then you're breathing from your chest. And you're not getting any good heart rate variability at all because you're going <laughs> And what that is is a way to stress yourself out. And you can see this because I have uh, bioneurofeedback machines here. And I can literally put people on, and if they do chest breathing like this, they stress themselves out. I can watch their heart rate go up. I can watch their blood pressure go up. I can watch everything go up. But if you see them breathe correctly, all of a sudden everything starts going down and relaxing. So the easy thing to say is, is this. What we need to do is take you from a chronic stress state and bring you back in to relaxation. Now here's the trick. What I just explained right now is literally what causes health changes in everybody. If I can bring you from a stress state and put you into relaxation, that's how you heal. That's literally how you heal. I just have to get you to stay there. So what does that mean? That means this. Remember beta is high energy consumption. If you live in a high beta state, you're going to get disease. No questions. But if we can get you to live in alpha and theta in a higher levels, you'll live longer because these are states of relaxation. So if you've heard people talk about meditating, they felt like they were in touch with the whole world, or they felt they were in contact with everybody because they could feel everybody, that's actually because their brain was resonating at alpha. And the same frequency, the, I, I forget the exact frequency, it's like 7 point something. But the frequency of the earth is, the earth is 7 point something. And if you can get your brain to 7, then you will feel that frequency, that resonant frequency. So that's what that meditation does. That's what being in a relaxed state does, is get you into alpha. And then if you get into theta, you can do even more healing. So these states help you. So the reason why I'm explaining this is, is guess what a chiropractic adjustment does? It instantaneously takes you from here to here. And if you're somebody that has a huge emotional release after I adjust you, it'll even take you to here. And so when I adjust you, I'm training your nerve system to stay in the proper states of relaxation. And this is why I have patients who come in and say, if I get adjusted and then meditate, I have the best meditation ever. That's because I already pushed your brain to the state you're supposed to be in. That's why I have people come in and we adjust them and then their body will do better or they won't get angry at their spouse anymore or you know, all these different things happen. They don't get stressed out anymore because they're going from stress, which is beta, into relaxation, alpha and theta. And when you live in these states, this is that zen, everything's good state and you're not going to have any problems. But you cannot consciously take your brain from beta and put it into alpha and theta you have to literally train your body. And what brings you there is actually the breathing. It's not your thought process. Because when you're thinking higher order thoughts, you're in beta. Here's another thing people want to know. The only way you can feel pain is if your brain has a high beta content. Pain only lives in beta. So if I take your brain and put you into an alpha and theta state, your brain will not receive the pain signal. You will not feel pain. And this is why people like monks can meditate and put a spike through their hand and pull it back out and not even care. Because they have more of an alpha or a theta state and their brain can't feel the pain. So what does this mean? If we adjust you and keep you there with some of the technologies we use here, like the mind tap, where we keep your brain into that alpha and theta state, we will take you out of the state that will cause fibromyalgia and put you into the state that will cause you to heal. That makes sense? And then we train your brain to stay here. And when it stays here, then you do better at work, you think clear, you don't get anxiety, 
and you can go through life in the zone, as some people call it. And it's because you have trained yourself to be in that relaxed state. Now, you're still going to be able to relax, relax in beta because if somebody cuts you off and almost kills you, you got to get real quick reactions. But that's only supposed to be used for short periods of time. It's not supposed to be where we run. Now, my theory personally is that we train ourselves to be this way through schooling. So we train ourselves to be alert, 100% on, ready to go. That's beta. That's defense posture. And it's harder to learn that way. So what I want you guys to understand is things like fibromyalgia, things like ALS, <coughs> things like MS. <coughs> These are things that are literally made by ourselves. If we allow our bodies to get into this relaxed state, literally you guys do miracles for me. You heal yourselves of these things. Every disease I've said, even cancer I've seen go away. Did I treat it? No. Did I put your brain into an alpha and theta state by helping to stimulate it? Yes. And then did you guys do the miracle? Hell yeah. So all of these disease processes always come down to the same thing. Are we communicating properly? And are we in hyperstress? It just depends on which part of the body the body wants to attack will determine the disease. Now we can go after the attacking thing and say, well, why don't we, and I've seen this. I had a lady come in here with MS and the new treatment for MS is radiation or chemotherapy. That's what they're doing to people. They're giving them low grade chemotherapy. Now why would they do that? The reason they do that is, is because now you're destroying the immune system so it can't attack the brain or the nerves anymore. But that's weakening the whole body. So why don't we get the body just to not attack it anymore? Instead of attacking the, the little soldiers that are following nobody, why don't we just get them to control and then they will stop attacking? And that's why we see different things where the body can heal itself. So, so literally it's that simple. It's as simple as if it talks, you get healthy. If it doesn't talk, you get sick. And it's so hard for a lot of people to understand because they've been taught that the more extreme, the more acute, the more, you know, kind of weird thinking the thing is, the more we spend on it, the better the idea is. So we've all been taught that if it's a real expensive thing and it's, it's experimental, then that's what we want. But the problem with that is, that's not what's going to heal you. The only thing that will ultimately heal you guys is you. And it's you being in an alpha and theta state. And when you're in that state, your whole body changes. This is why I can say with no qualms that when we adjust people, we'll watch them heal, to heal spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Because their whole body comes into that relaxation state. And when you start resonating with the, with the frequency, you can say love, or the frequency of relaxation or joy, then it's impossible for you to be sick. This is why there's even been some people, and they just did it a different way, that literally had things like cancer or diabetes or things like that, and they did laugh therapy. So what they literally did is went and got a bunch of movies and made themselves laugh for months. Well, guess what that does? It puts you into that state. And if you stay in that state, it's impossible for disease to grow in you. Isn't that cool? I think it's freaking awesome. Because you have this switch inside you to heal yourselves. We just have to get you out of mode and into relaxation mode. And that's the big key, is that if we're stuck in anxiety, we're never going to heal if we're stuck there. But if we can get you there longer and longer into an alpha and theta state, then you guys do miracles for me, which is literally healing your body. Because then instead of attacking yourself, you heal yourself. So for fibromyalgia specifically, you stop hurting the muscles. For MS, you stop causing placking of the brain. ALS, you stop hurting the, the spinal cord. What is ALS? Okay. ALS is a degeneration of the motor neurons causing you to have lost function of it. It's an autoimmune problem where you attack yourself. So if you ever hear anybody say autoimmune, too much beta. That's literally what it is. 
It's really that simple. But we've been taught the simple things can't be the answer. It's always got to be something extreme and out there and, or some plant in some unknown place hidden under a bush somewhere. Like, literally. And it isn't that hard. It's just you got to get calm and relax. And so my goal is to bring you there. And if we can get you to stay there, then you guys will literally hear yourself of anything. And I mean anything. I've seen it. You name it, I've seen it. The big one I want to brag about right now is I have a little baby who was told at six weeks that he would grow up to be mentally retarded, that he would not be able to move his head correctly, he would have learning disabilities as well as uh, movement disorders. They had three EEGs that stated he had bad brain function. We adjusted them. So people say, well, how can chiropractic help anything? It's because I'm not the one healing the people. I'm not the one cutting into the person. I'm stimulating the alpha and theta. So we stimulate the alpha and theta states in this child, and now he has a proper, a normal EEG reading. Now he's on, literally in three weeks, he went from being told that he was gonna have a ton of learning disabilities and problems to having a normal EEG, to being perfectly normal and even on the high end of all his scores. So how is that possible? And the answer is, is because it's not me or chiropractic that's doing it. It's your body doing it and you're healing yourselves. We're just helping you by pushing the buttons and getting you into that state. And if we get the people young, and this is why I love taking care of babies and young people, then they don't grow the disease. They don't grow the dysfunction. And then it, takes, it can take up to years to change that dysfunction. So if we change the neurology early, it grows into the right. But if we let it grow for 40, 50, 60 years, then when I try to change it, it's like diverting the Colorado River. It ain't easy. And that's why there's a lot of repetition when people get sick later on in life because we have to literally change the neurology. Because when you change it and get it firing correctly, then the muscles work correctly, the organs work correctly, the glandular secretions work correctly. This is why taking care of babies is the most important thing that I do because I'm literally setting us up for a society where we don't have to use drugs. Because we're taking care of ourselves. That's why I love taking care of kids. And they're so much easier. <laughs> they're not all jacked up. I literally have to just touch them and they do all the healing. Yes? So, you know, people say that fibromyalgia is about the nerves and then mm -hmm. ner and neuralgia is about the nerve. Like, is there a connection between those two? So, neuralgia means nerve, nerve pain or, or yeah. Neuralgia is nerve pain. Fibro is fibrous tissue. My is muscle and algae. So it's fibrous muscle tissue inflammation or pain. If you just break the word down simplistically. It's actually muscular issues where the muscle becomes inflamed, but then the neuromuscular junction becomes inflamed. And because it's not working right. But once again, it's because the nerve system is not telling the immune system what to do and it starts attacking areas of high use. So does that mean the commercial? <laughs> what? The commercial about how to cure by you know take this pill and cut so off what your, the only thing, off your nerves yeah you know, the only thing the commercial yeah, yeah the only thing they're doing is they're doing the same as what radiation would be doing or the same thing as what that low grade chemotherapy does is it stops the body from attacking itself and they're literally stopping you from feeling so you can do one of two things you can either stop the body from attacking itself. Or you can stop the sensory nerves from feeling. Okay. But it's still attacking. Yeah. It's still happening. You yeah. Can't. You just can't feel it. Like you take a pain med. You broke your arm. You have a broken arm. You just can't feel it. So there's a problem there. But if we just keep hopped up enough, long enough, we'll feel fine, right? What are you going to say, Doc? We had talked this conversation about beta. And when I tend to relax, I tend to go to sleep. <laughs> yes. So a lot so of people, here. that's most of the people in the yeah. U.S. And... <laughs> The reason why that is, is there's such a state of beta that their body, if it can get any relaxation, will go right to delta. That's not healing. No, you heal a little bit, but not like you should, because what's happening is your body goes, I've burned all the energy out, I don't know what to do, and I gotta crash. That's what I do. And that's 90% of America, and that's why they're sick. Right there is 90% of all diseases, is that we can't go through these states, and we go right from here to here, 
and we go from boom to sleep. And then a lot of these people, there's different symptoms, but some of them is it's hard to get up in the morning because they're burnt out. They've literally burned their system all the time, so they can't work. they can't get up. They're just like, I don't want to get up. It's hard because literally their body still needs to heal. But we got to get going, so we got to get that coffee to turn on the beta more, turn up that sympathetic, get the adrenaline going, get everything going. So if you're one of those people that's addicted to coffee, it's just you're addicted to getting your beta on, getting that going. Does that make sense? Anything else? Great commercial. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So we're good, guys? Yes. Excellent. So the takeaway is this. If we can get you into alpha and theta, you heal every time. We just have to get you there long enough. And that's what I do, and that's why the repetition is the way it is. Because each one time we adjust, we get you into here. You jump right back out. Right the next day. If you get too stressed out, and that's why we use neuroentrainment devices, such as MindTap or the NeuroInfinity, to get you to stay there longer. And the longer you stay there, the healthier you get. That's why I use the products that I use, is because if we can get you to stay here longer, you guys will do miracles for me. And then once your body actually heals, then when you're in these states, you become very cognitively aware and you can do things quicker. And that's why I see a lot of people that do things a lot quicker when they've been under care for a while. Cool. Okay. Pleasure talking to you guys. Thank you.